Kashmir. Specifically, are focusing on the issues which are cropping up in the upcoming as such, and more specifically, as a dean, uh, Department of Students' Welfare, we have a more, much more emphasis on the uh, extracurricular and co-curricular activities beyond the academic activities as such. I think their larger role for the societal implication is much important, and I do see that the catchment area is or the colleges as such. So we have the budding people coming from the colleges and the universities as such. The future belongs to you and I hope that you have deep insights in terms of the needs of the hour as such. So I welcome you all and since morning I hope that you stay with us comfortable here. We try that in our own best as such. As Department of Students Welfare, uh, you know, conducts different activities for the welfare of students it has done in the past it's doing now also extracurricular activities are very important and we give lots of importance uh, in the university of kashmir towards the holistic development of students you can see our playgrounds are busy today some are playing hockey some are playing volleyball some are playing football even the girls so this shows what importance we give uh, to the activi extracurricular activities of the students. Uh, Kasaba Saab has just now said about the MOU with IIPA, we will definitely do it. Uh, you know, uh, Shamim Saab will, uh, you know, see where the MOU draft is right now and will definitely, uh, you know, get it legally vetted and then uh, go for the uh, signatures. and. Uh, you know, uh, whatever uh, good, I think we make a road map and step by step we do it. Like uh, debating uh, this uh, cup is over there. We can see other activities pertaining to environment and hygiene. Number of activities we can do. Do char paanch humne list ki wo kar sakte hain. And uh, you know, uh, something else, you know, industry connect of uh, students, if IIPA can help us for internships, you know, something like that for the benefit of the students, we'll definitely, uh, you know, do it because uh, these days lots of activities are being done for the uh, welfare of the students and IIPA is one of the old setups and uh, definitely they have played the role uh, in our own UT also and uh, University has a long connection uh, with IIPA. We would definitely like to strengthen it. Not only have this IIPA debating cup, but many more activities uh, can be done and we'll definitely do it. I must tell you that our Honorable Vice Chancellor is very committed to, hold, to, to allow us to hold all such kind of activities where not only the uh, students but the community in general uh, will have a lot of uh, these addresses. Uh, as far as the present uh, today's seminar, today's debate is concerned regarding the artificial intelligence, how it is going to, to, to impact to make our lives very easy. It's important to know that when we talk about the artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence we always uh, remember now the word AI, ML, artificial intelligence and machine learning. But have we understood sometime that it is it is really going to revolutionize our life culture, our lifestyle? I was talking to one of my friend who is a, a doctor by profession. He told me that once it is really uh, in our profession, it will be very difficult. To, uh, to have more uh, that, that those technical technologies with their jobs. Because uh, while sitting at your home and using the AI as a tool, you can, you, you, you can know that what kind of issues uh, if I have and what is the treatment and other things. So this is going to revolutionize. But at the same time, uh, I have been advocating on this thing that we have to be very much ready how to uh, face this artificial intelligence. It's not a challenge. It is. It will be, in fact, it will be as a tool to uh, modernize our day-to-day -day activities. But at the same time, we have to be ready that how to how to face it because it's not so easy. Since I am the student of physics, I know many many things about it. 
uh, it's important that students are uh, debating, students are participating in such a competition. Uh, but I would definitely like and uh, request my dean students' welfare and also request the senior functionaries of IPA that we need to do it at a much larger level. I'm very happy that despite the fact last year we missed this annual debate, Hello. but uh, Professor Nirupur Sahiba blessed us this year and uh, we could hold it. As Professor Nero Versaiba has been a great support to the IAP and we would like to have a very sustained sort of programs. And what is the vision of IAP is that public administration and the academics of the Kashmir University are blended so that we have in real sense a nursery of young officers from the Kashmir University and uh, who would go to different areas, not only in Jammu Kashmir, but uh, to various parts of the country. And Madam, you will be very happy. Recently, I uh, met a young boy and um, he told me, Sir, I am in the administrative service. I said, you are from Jammu Kashmir. I said, no, sir, I am Madhya Pradesh administrative service. And he is a Kashmiri boy. And this is the vision we should always, under the dynamic leadership of Professor Nilo Sahiba, we should propagate that uh, it's a very huge country. And uh, we should not confine ourselves to Jammu Kashmir only, but uh, boys and girls from this place, from Kashmir University itself, uh, have made a name in the country. There are two parts of the debate that we have done today. One is about artificial intelligence and second is about intelligence. Artificial intelligence is the phenomenon that we need not be so scared about. Human history is known for something that's called natural stupidity. And as they say, artificial intelligence is no match to natural stupidity. But the way this theme was handled by our young students, I was amazed by the information that they have about this particular subject. Just one suggestion that I want to make, one request. If you want to know about technology, read about technology because otherwise we will be confined to opinions and comments only and remarks only. There are great many living authors who have invented this, who know, who penetrate into the deepest realms of this phenomenon called artificial intelligence. There is somebody called Thomas Friedman and he provides an anecdote, an antidote actually, the countermeasure through which we can fight all this challenge and the fears that we have about this. He says that we have to convert AI into IA. If AI is artificial intelligence, IA is intelligent assistance. Because we depend on it. It is unavoidable. It is in the face. As Gali puts it, Usi ko dekkar jite hain jis kafar pe dam nikle. Because this is something that gives us life, but we have to be at the same time aware of all the challenges and the fears that it comes with. and develop sustainable solutions. AI is making the world a better place for the people with disabilities. From voice recognitions to image recognitions, AI is empowering the disabled people to contribute to the society and live more independently. The dangers of AI are more apparent to us than ever before. These dangers can, uh, include issues like data bias, data theft, economic disruption, uh, diabolical misuse of uh, AI, also lack of transparency and uh, uh, human resource uh, depletion due to over uh, over reliance on AI, and the most important one, the uh, the existential threat of AGI. Let me discuss some of these issues with you, starting from the first issue at hand, economic issue. 
Earlier people used to believe that AI will come for people with repetitive jobs. But now we see that AI can code itself and it can also generate uh, creative art. It can even uh, pass through competitive exams. So this displacement can lead to widespread unemployment and uh, workers may find their skills obsolete. So this also resembles the tragedies that uh, came after industrial revolution where almost 10 million people died and a lot more were unemployed. We have to understand that all the threats that we have been making, that AI is going to create doomsday, that AI is going to create civil wars, that AI is going to create nuclear wars, it can, the war that AI will create will be more devastating than actual civil and criminal wars. It's all utopian. Respected judges, it's all utopian. It hasn't happened yet. And I want to show you that as per my research, People, engineers, software developers, they are trying their level best to avoid this calamity. I can assure you of that. Following that, AI has done a lot for us in terms of healthcare, education, giving personalized softwares, giving personalized learning, adaptive softwares that helps people to read and write according to their own will. For example, children with autism. There are AI softwares that will teach them on their own need and afford. We have to understand that as well. And ladies and gentlemen, the hypocrisy of it all, the irony of it all, that whatever we are today, we completely we are absolutely thankful to our teachers who taught us, who taught us in a physical manifestation. But we are here because we learn from AI. We learn because Google was there to help us. We learn because we did our assignments as lazy students through our GPT. Yes, AI is increasingly becoming dangerous. Delusional in the sense that destruction does not look like that. Rather, an image of a toddler carrying an iPad, burning his eyes, watching brain rot content as he, as he forever alters his brain chemistry is a more accurate representation. When you think of the battle between good and evil in the context of artificial intelligence, we tend to place the negative impacts in a far off timeline, in a future where you and I are too old not to care or fortunately don't exist to deal with the consequences of our inaction and complicity with using this dubious technology. It is concerning that those negative impacts have already started to seep in and are more subtle than dystopian thriller movies like Blade Runner or iRobot would have us believe. Surely AI won't get us scared but there are far more worse things than death. Imagine you're a student tasked with creating a boring assignment. You go home and you open the internet, praise the internet gods as you open ChatGPT, feed the data copied off from the crevices of the internet and generate content for your assignment. So far so good, right? That's not harmful at all. What if I tell you that your mere 15 use of ChatGPT comes at so high a cost that you would rather rethink using AI or not use it at all? What if I tell you that your house would lose access to fresh water coming out of your taps for roughly 10 or 11 hours every time you use ChatGPT for a mere 15 minutes? This is not exaggeration, ladies and gentlemen. This is a truth which is going to be a reality in the next five years as Sarah Lucino, an AI researcher who has worked on projects concerning the ethics and environmental impacts of using AI in the past decade or so has warned us about. Science is all about unraveling the creation of this universe. Starting right from its origin, science always tries to find the hidden parameters behind the universe and then formulate them into the human kind. Now let us see what our scholars have researched about this very topic that how artificial intelligence is there for the betterment of humankind. According to the International Journal of New Technology and Research, their research claims that AI is a DNA decoder, which means it can handle so many heavy competitions at once, and thus it will make DNA analysis very easy. You know, the use of artificial intelligence in the DNA field, it can help in predicting the better breed and species, and it will also help in unconditioning the unfavorable conditions from these breeding species. However, it will help in eliminating the biggest diseases like HIV and cancers. Ladies and gentlemen, how can we forget 
the discussion of AI wheelchairs. AI wheelchairs are not a fictitious thing anymore. These AI wheelchairs are programmed for the people with disability. They work under the commands, voice commands or input, input commands to move. By this, here I am trying to make you understand that a disabled person is no more dependent, is no longer dependent on a second person. Here we are discussing how it is impacting our humanity. So don't you think a disabled person who always used to like always used to have a help of second person now he can move by his own himself? AI isn't just a science fiction. It is actually evolving at an unprecedented rate. With it, the potential for unforeseen consequences. Also, as some of the participants said about autonomous weapons, do you know that autonomous weapons are guided by the algorithms with no moral compass? Isn't it disastrous? Come on, just think about it. Okay, let's move to the next part. We have, do you remember those days when our minds used to be like well-organized libraries? Of course, we were like that, back in time. We were like, you know, we would think, ponder, create, all neurons firing in harmony. But then, unfortunately, AI waltzed in. All the algorithms, neurons disrupted our mental ballroom. Suddenly, our cognition faced a remix. Predictive text, fixing our sentences, recommendation engines, shaping our taste. And even the chatbots masquerading as therapists. Isn't it funny just look at it? Chatbots masquerading as therapists. So now, here we are in an existential tango with the AI. I suppose and I believe that critical thinking and creativity, the very essence of humanity, are now partners in this dance. Will we lead or will we follow? Only time and a few more AI updates will tell. <laughs>